Having a desk setup that you number one, love, number two, inspires you, and number three, increases your productivity is so key. And here at Think Media, we're always making different changes to our setups, as well as building setups from nothing, just because we wanna test different gear and things like that. And so if you've been looking at multiple YouTube videos to get some inspiration on your setup, then I'm glad you found this one, because in this video, we'll be looking at four different setups that I know will give you some ideas. And we're gonna start with Kyle's first. Kyle's setup actually checks the box of both aesthetics and functionality and will increase your productivity, but at the same time, keep you inspired while you work. Let's jump to it. As a creative person, developing a space that is efficient, productive, and enjoyable is essential. Studies show you can increase your productivity by over 40% with a dual monitor setup. So in this video, I'll be breaking down my minimal dual monitor setup and how I use it for video editing, video conference calls, and more. I'll do my best to answer any questions in the comments and I'll place links to all equipment and gear mentioned in this video in the description below. To start this off, I purchased a FlexiSpot sit-stand desk. I went to Home Depot when I bought a butcher block with my desired dimensions, in this case 32 inches by 6 feet wide. I then sanded for a smooth finish and then stained to bring out the natural wood tone as well as protect the surface. Next, I wanted a desk shelf to give a finishing look and I ended up finding this shelf on Amazon for, at the time of shooting this video, $57. It may not look as premium as the Grovemade desk shelf, but it looks pretty identical to it and way more affordable. I recently dealt with sciatica, so I decided to invest in a proper chair that promotes healthy ergonomics. I went with the Herman Miller Aeron. It has many different adjustment points to suit my needs. It looks very clean and minimal and it has a solid overall build quality. Considering the time I spend in this chair, I don't regret this purchase at all. This whole setup is powered by a 2021 MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip. Coming from a 2019 MacBook Pro with the Intel chip, let me just say this has made a huge difference. Now we all know that the Macs do not have a plethora of ports, so to combat this, I pair it with my CalDigit TS3+. Plus. Now we've done videos on this before and you can check those out in the description below. This virtually has everything I need from an ethernet port, USB ports, SD card reader, and a display port. On my desk, I utilize two 32 inch ViewSonic monitors. One is connected through the display port on the CalDigit while the other one is connected straight into the MacBook Pro. If you connect the secondary monitor into the CalDigit, the computer will not recognize it. I used to use Apple's Magic Mouse, but my hand would cramp after hours of editing. So I switched to the MX Master 3 mouse. First off, the form and shape is more ergonomic for your hand, making it more comfortable to use. And through their software, you can reprogram all of the wheels and buttons to whatever best suits your workflow. Now for my keyboard that I use, I actually use two of them. The first one is the Nufi Air 75. It's very slim, it's minimal, and doesn't take up a lot of space on my desk. The only downside is it doesn't have a number pad, and that's when I use my Keytron K4. This one isn't as low profile, but it still keeps a clean desk space. Now both of these are Bluetooth, you can also use a cable, and they both work for Windows and Mac. Now on my left side, I still have my Apple trackpad. I use this mainly to quickly navigate to different desktops on my MacBook, as well as navigating through my timeline in Premiere Pro. It's not essential, but I have it, so I might as well use it. Now all of this sits on a felt pad that I purchased from Grovemade. I went with Grovemade's felt pad because I know they make high quality stuff, and this is something that's gonna have wear and tear on it every day, and I didn't want something breaking apart that's cheaply made. Now when you're video editing, half of your video is audio. You can watch a video that maybe doesn't look the best, but if a video doesn't sound good, you're more likely to stop watching it. Because we want you who are watching our videos to have a great viewing experience, I use my HS5 speakers that I've had for years paired with an 8 inch subwoofer. That way I can hear plosives or any unpleasant frequencies and treat it post-production. And these get routed through a Focusrite Scarlett Solo. I think this interface is one of the best budget interfaces out there, so if you're in the market for one, I highly recommend it. On the wall in front of me, I placed a sound panel that I got from GIK Acoustics. This helps to minimize echo when monitoring audio from my speakers, as well as help the microphone that I am currently using to sound more clear when recording. The microphone that I've been using on my setup is the Samsung Q9U. This is a great plug and play USB mic 
that does not require a sound interface. And to support this mic, I'm using the Rode PSA-1 because of its length and how easy it is to bring the mic in for use and to push it away to keep my desk space clear. Now the camera that I use for zoom calls is the Sony a7 IV. This is a little overkill, but I already own and use for YouTube videos. Plus, Sony makes it very simple to use this camera as a webcam because it plugs straight into your computer using a USB cable and you don't need any other software to do so. When on calls, I pair this with the G Master 16-35. With my camera being an arm length in front of me, this gives me the focal length that I need, as well as that blurry background with the aperture at 2.8. And this whole setup is connected to my desk using a camera desk mount with a small rig ball head attached to it. And I have a continuous power adapter to make sure my camera stays on for those zoom calls that go a little longer than expected. Again, for reference, I'll have all links in the description below. As far as what's around my desk, I've been slowly building it out to make it my own. On either side, I have two cabinets I purchased from Ikea. This helps keep things organized as well as hide any clutter that I have lying around. On top of each of those, I have two plants I purchased from my local Home Depot and a Philips Hue lamp. I believe this one is called the Iris and this can be controlled through my phone and change it through all the various RGB colors. And above this, I have a few records that I framed that I enjoy listening to. Super clean setup, Kyle, as per usual. And a lot of people actually ask questions about his setup, you know, from this video and I wanted to answer them with you. So maybe if you have the same questions, we can get them covered. The first question is from Leadbin and he asks, where can I get those wallpapers for the computer and the wallpaper Kyle uses is actually a Mac OS wallpaper that comes with your Mac if you have a PC get a Mac just kidding just search Mac OS uh, wallpapers in Google and I'm sure you'll find it the next question that we have is what monitors do you use and the monitors that Kyle uses are called the ViewSonic 4K IPS monitors. And we'll post links down to everything in the description below if you didn't know that already. But these monitors are cool because they're super seamless. They don't show any branding. And especially when you put them together, they have a very minimal you know, space in between. So definitely sweet monitors if you do creative work because of the color accuracy as well. With that being said, we're gonna jump into this next setup and actually a setup that I made uh, here in Kyle's uh, studio because he got this new Husky desk, but I wanted to create a super nice minimal setup that literally will, is essentially a YouTube studio on wheels. And so let's jump into that video right now. Now let's start with the desk that's holding everything together. This is a Husky desk that we found at Home Depot and this is the 48 inch wide version. This desk comes in white and black and it also has two drawers but you can order it without drawers as well. But there is honestly no replacement for how solid this desk is. It also has an adjustable height, which is super cool. They actually call this an, a workbench uh, on their website or when you go to Home Depot. Uh, and the, although it is adjustable, it's not electric. You actually have to crank it with the crank that they give you, but you can take that off and put it somewhere else, which is super nice. But this desk honestly is amazing and it comes with the wheels. So you can just screw on the wheels when you put it together. And honestly, putting this desk together was a super breeze. This version of the desk that we got with the drawers came in at around $230 and obviously that price will fluctuate if you get a bigger size or no drawers and things like that. But you can get a desk like this essentially for around $200, which I think is one of the best deals. And be sure to check out the links down in the description below if you'd like to check out these products yourself and find which one fits you best. As far as the monitor for this setup, you might've noticed that it's a unique size. This is actually called the LG Dual Up Monitor. It's a 27 and a half inch monitor that's 16 by 18. So it's it's not your traditional widescreen monitor, but I really think this is a cool screen because it not only accomplishes what I need it to, especially when editing videos or surfing the web, it works really well with pages and things like that. And another cool thing about this monitor is it actually came with the mount that actually it has that you see in this uh, setup. It actually comes with the monitor itself, which is super cool to know. And really this monitor arm is unique as it allows you to do essentially whatever you need the monitor to do. If you need to tilt it, you need to swing it, you need to rotate it, uh, it kind of does it all, uh, even to the extent of hiding 
cables. Yes, you can pop off the plastic, run cables through behind it so it keeps it clean and minimal uh, with whatever workstation you actually use it with. But this is the LG Dual Up Monitor. Now, I hope you're getting an idea of maybe building out your own setup because you don't necessarily need to use everything we use. And so this desk setup will work with any monitor. If you already even have a monitor, maybe you just get the desk itself and you'll be already halfway there. And then as far as the laptop that powers up this entire thing, we are using a Apple MacBook Pro 16 inch with the M1 Max chip inside of it and a few other couple upgrades, but essentially it's a machine that can handle any creative work you throw at it, whether it be, you know, live streaming or graphic design and things like that. And so this, this absolutely crushes everything we throw at it. And we've been loving this laptop here at Think Media. And we love that it actually gives you a great secondary monitor to use as it's open, as well as the keyboard. So we still use the keyboard of the computer itself and really the two paired is really a cool and neat thing. Like if you're editing videos, you can have the you know video up top and then essentially have your timeline down low or maybe your effects down low and then have your timeline underneath your video. But there's so many cool ways that you can configure this because of how much screen real estate you now have. But with that being said, I do think it's important to have an ergonomically nice mouse. And with that, we use the Logitech MX Master 3. And I've been loving this mouse. I love the click sounds that it has. And you can order a version that doesn't have a click sound. But just for you know be doing computer work for long periods of time, it is really nice on your hand as opposed to a trackpad where that can get kind of finicky with your wrist and things like that. Now moving on to how this desk works as a YouTube studio, starting with the lighting setup, we got this desk light from Godox. It's called the ES45. This is a super sweet light. It's not only cool because of the features it has, but it also is cool because it comes with everything. And if you order this light, you're gonna get the light stand itself that clamps onto the desk, a nice large light that is essentially all you need to light your face. And then the light itself actually comes with a wireless rechargeable remote that kind of comes off the back of the light and you can literally control the light wirelessly and put this remote kind of on your desk and turn it on and off. You can change the temperature, you can adjust the brightness, and if you have multiple lights, you can actually put them all on one group and control it with one remote, which is super nice. But that is the Godox ES45. Again, links down to everything in the description below. And then as far as the camera, I really wanted to think about a camera that uh, looks great, but is also very easy to use as a webcam. And I don't think there's any other one better than the Sony ZV-E10. And the reason why I say that is because this camera not only shoots great 4K video, the kit lens that comes with it is at 16 millimeters and so that's kind of wide enough from where it is kind of like arm's length distance to give you that nice medium wide shot and it's a super light camera so it doesn't bog down the weight of anything which is super nice but what's also cool about the sony zve 10 is that you can actually use just a usb cable to use it as a webcam so simply plugging in a usb c into the camera and then plugging it into the laptop, turning on the USB camera feature in the camera itself, and then you can use it for zoom. And now with the light and the camera, you have a sick setup to do either zoom calls or maybe live streams with, but it really is easy to use. And so we went with the Sony ZV-E10 and really to keep this super minimal, we used a small rig mount to clamp onto the light stand itself. And then we put a quick release system on the camera so we can just slide on and off the camera as needed. Um, but having this setup keeps the desk super clear and legit with no tripods and light stands, we have a full-blown YouTube studio uh, minus your audio, which I'll get into in just a moment. But having the ZV-E10 for those dual purposes is key. Now, when I thought about an audio solution for this setup, I thought about something that doesn't take up any more desk space. I don't need to clamp anything on the desk as a traditional kind of like work desk with a live stream setup would have. I actually went with the Deity Pocket Wireless, which is a wireless mic that has a clip-on lab that you could put on your shirt but plugging that into the camera itself not only gives your video great audio quality if you record in camera on an SD card, but you can actually select your camera as your audio source as well in whatever platform you do conference calls or live streams with. You can just select the ZV-E10 as your audio source and now the audio that it's getting from the mic itself is running through the entire setup. Now, if you don't have the ZV-E10 and maybe you wanna do something like this, 
you can actually plug in the Deity Wireless into your computer using a USB cable and actually just select it as your USB mic, which is super sweet and I think is a very underrated way to capture audio when using your computer with a wireless mic. A lot of people think they need to get a mic that's in the shot, like a dynamic mic or something. You don't need to do that with a Deity Pocket Wireless, but having this whole setup put together was really cool and fun to do. And being able to just literally roll the table and change the shot literally in a moment uh, to get a different kind of shot. So maybe you work in a corner, but when you wanna shoot YouTube videos, you can kind of pull it and put it at an angle and not really have to move anything else other than the desk, which is super sweet. But a couple things we did to really clean up the cables and things like that was we used a lot of command strips for a lot of those bricks that are on power adapters to just suspend it underneath the desk so it can kind of be hidden away. It's kind of our trick that we like to do. It's inexpensive and command strips are very reliable and can hold a lot of weight surprisingly. We also strapped a power strip to the bottom of this desk with a really long cable on it to plug into an outlet with that being the only thing needing to power this entire desk. And so when rolling it around, you're not running over a thousand different wires because everything is now just plugged into that power strip down below. And then just wrapping up the cables so they're just kind of clean and tucked away, which presents this to be a very clean space to work in and it makes you want to work and makes you want to be creative. How sick is that LG monitor? The dual up is like unlike any other. And it's so funny that LG would actually release a monitor that's like not a widescreen monitor when everybody's doing like ultra wide monitors. But that monitor is super cool, especially if you're doing like, we found video editing, it's sweet on, if you do any creative work, but also productive work. Like if you leave pages open, it's awesome because it's like not a full screen, but if you butt that against a widescreen monitor, it's gonna be a really clean setup. Nonetheless, I wanted to get through some of the questions like I did last time. And Jamco asked, fantastic. I loved every minute of this video, but I was blown away with the audio solution. Would this be possible with the wireless road system? And I'm assuming he's talking about the Rode Wireless Go. And the simple answer to that is yes. If you have the first version of the Rode Wireless Go, you can plug it into the camera and just select the camera as your audio source. But if you have the Rode Wireless Go 2, you can actually plug the receiver via USB into your computer or laptop and just go directly to your computer with that audio. And so simple answer is yes, you can. Thank you, Jam Co, for asking the question. The next question is from Eric and he asks, what is that second vertical bar light? I need that for my living room. That bar light that we usually throw in uh, our videos, it's actually lighting me right now, but you just can't see it on the video, but it's called a Govi light and it's a super dope light because you can put it in the corner and it can do any color or any color combination you'd like it to, but we'll post links to that in the description below. Super dope thing to level up the aesthetics of any room. GalPal asks, can the lavalier mic work with an iPhone? The answer to that one is yes. The Deity Pocket Wireless actually comes with a TRRS cable. You just need a lightning adapter to plug that in, but then you're good to go and you are up and running with a clean audio solution for your iPhone. But before we get into this next setup from Nolan, I just wanted to thank the sponsor of this video and that is Elgato. If you're doing talking head videos, live streams, or video podcasts, it's important to have a reliable audio solution. Having an XLR mic will give you a more rich and full sound than a USB mic would. Currently, you're listening to the Elgato Wave DX. And not only does it give you a pro sound, but it'll also give you a pro look. And this mic works with any XLR interface you could find, but even better when you pair it with the Elgato Wave XLR. So you can use this mic with your computer or laptop, and it's both a clean look as well as a great solution if you're doing live streams, online interviews, video conference calls, and more. And if you want to save money, you can actually buy various bundles they offer with the mic arm, the XLR cable, everything you need with one click. So check out the link down in the description below. But thank you, Elgato, for sponsoring this video. Let's jump into Nolan's setup right now. Let's go ahead and get started with the desk. Now the actual desk that I got was a standing desk and it's actually the cheapest standing desk on Amazon. I think I got it for around $200 at the time. Right now it's at $260, so there might be a cheaper option out there. But I've had this thing for over a year and I love being able to stand up and sit down during the day. Now the top that I have is nothing special. It's like a $30 desktop from Ikea. Definitely something I want to replace over time so that it's a bit sturdier and stronger, especially with all this expensive gear. That is something I want to 
upgrade next. Now on top of my desk, I have this dark wooden desk shelf and I really like the color and the dimension that it brings to my desk setup. Now this only costs $60 on Amazon, but they do sell out really fast. So check the link down below, make sure it's still available if you wanna pick one up. They do go fast, but they do get restocked as well. On top of that, we have the Kanto YU2 speakers and I love the sound that I get from these. And these are actually $270, but for me, when I'm editing videos all day and creating content and listening to stuff, I don't wanna have headphones over my ears the entire day because then my ears get tired. And so having some really nice speakers were really important for me and I absolutely love these. Now the computer mouse that I decided to go with was the Logitech MX Master 3 and I absolutely love this mouse. Originally I was using just the magic mouse from Apple, but my hands started to cramp up a lot during long edits. And so I went with this and it definitely helped because it just shapes my hand a bit better. And there's tons of customizable buttons. So I found when I'm editing inside of Final Cut Pro, I can edit a lot faster because of some of the buttons on the mouse. And of course I have a little Star Wars mouse pad underneath because I just love Star Wars. And I think this thing was like $7 on Amazon and I got it like probably four or five years ago. So this thing has been around for a long time and hey, still looks good. Now on the back of the desk, we do have this monitor mount, which is holding my monitor as well as my laptop. Eventually I do wanna go with a dual monitor setup, but this really works perfectly and you only need one monitor and you basically get two monitors with the laptop. So I really like this setup right now. It's been working perfectly for me. Now the computer that I'm using that I do all of my work off of is the MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip. This is the 16 inch version in 2021 and I absolutely love this computer. Computer. I can edit all of my footage and have some really complex timelines and this thing just does a great job of dealing with all of it. It never slows me down. This thing is just an absolute beast. Now from my laptop, I do have a docking station, which is the CalDigit TS3. And this allows me to connect a bunch of accessories and the monitor and everything else that is attached to this computer is through this TS3. And I also found some really cheap brackets so that I could actually mount this underneath my desk. And that was a really nice find. Now the CalDigit is out of stock right now. So we're going to leave a link to an alternative. However, if it does pop up back in stock, check the links in the description. The monitor that I'm using for this setup is a ViewSonic 32 inch 4K monitor. And I really like it. It doesn't have the same exact colors that I notice on my 16 inch beautiful retina display MacBook Pro, but it does the job and it really is a great monitor. I do wish the monitor was a little bit brighter behind my desk. You can see I have these windows. And so sometimes it can be a little tricky because it's so bright outside. But overall, I do like this monitor and we're gonna leave a link to the newer version because of this one they don't make anymore. On the back of the monitors, I have these Govee light bars and it's really cool because they can change colors and I can control it with my Google Home so I can just turn them on and off really easily. Now on top of the monitor, we have this really, really cool piece of tech. It's a top light and it is for my desk because I didn't wanna have a actual lamp on my desk, but I did need some lights so I could write things down or I could work from my desk at nighttime and this thing just works perfectly. I love the minimal design and how the light actually doesn't shine on the monitor. So it just kind of lays on the actual desk itself. And then it has this wireless remote, which is super cool, super easy to use. And it just kind of feels futuristic. And I love having this control knob for my light on my desk. Now, when it comes to the microphone that I'm using, I'm using the Samson Q9U, which is a $120 microphone. And then I have it on this heavy duty podcast arm. And I absolutely love this microphone. Before that, I was using the Samson Q2U, but this one just looks so much better. And I absolutely love the sound that I get from it. Now, this is a USB and XLR microphone. So previously I was going USB-C straight into my computer and that worked perfectly, but I wanted to experiment with running an XLR out to my camera so that it would be completely synced to my camera. Now, in order to do that, I did get a right angle XLR adapter and this one was only a foot long. I definitely should have got like a six foot long cable. I just didn't. So that's something I'm going to upgrade and I'll leave a link to that below as well. Now, at the end of the XLR, you are gonna to wanna to convert that to go into your camera. And so I have this converter from Comica and I actually picked it up for $36 and it's on sale right now for $36. Usually it is around $50, but this thing's awesome. This thing is a converter and a preamp so you can control the volume and you also can plug in headphones if you want to listen back to hear how it sounds while you're filming. Now I did want this preamp to be close to me so I could turn it up and down or turn it on and off and so I did need to get an extender to go to the camera and so that is just your basic 3.5 millimeter audio cable extension cable. 
something like that. Now the camera I'm using on my desk is the Sony a7 IV. This really is a beast of a camera. And one of the reasons I wanted to use this for my webcam is because you can go straight from USB-C to your computer and stream in 1080 HD at 30 frames per second or at 60 frames per second. The lens I'm using on this camera is a Tamron 17 to 28 f 2.8 lens. And then I have a power adapter going in there. So I never have to replace batteries. This thing is just plugged into a wall and it's always on or I could turn it off if I want to, but I never have to replace the batteries. Like I mentioned, the USB-C can be used to actually do live streaming. So you don't need to do anything with the HDMI out on this camera. So you need to make sure though that you get the right USB-C cable. I'm gonna leave that link down below. If you don't get the right one, it probably just won't work. It's not going to connect to your computer or you're only going to be able to live stream in 720p. And so if you get the right one, you are going to have all the options where you can live stream in 1080 up to 60 frames per second. And you also want to use the one that I linked down below because you want that 90 degree cable. If you don't do this, then basically you're going to cover up a lot of your screen and you're not going to be able to see your audio levels and you need to see your audio levels when you're filming. So if you get that cable, then you perfectly can see your screen and still use the camera without using an extra monitor. And I love this setup because I can just turn on the camera and instantly start filming my content or I can start live streaming. Now to hold up the camera, I have this camera desk mount. So it just connects to the back of the desk. And I love this because we don't have a lot of room in a small office to place a tripod for lights and cameras and microphones. So this makes it really easy to keep the camera exactly where I want without having to set up an actual tripod. This just attaches right to the back of the desk. And then on top of the stand, I have a ball head where I can move the camera around and get it nice and level. And this also has a quick release plate. So it's really easy for me to take the camera off and take it wherever I want to go. And then I can just snap it right back in. Now for the key light that I'm using for my desk setup, I'm using the Godox ES45 key light. I picked up this light for $120, but sometimes you can find it between 120 to $140, but it does come with that desk mount. So it is literally meant for this kind of a setup where you can put it on the desk, you can raise it up exactly where you want. And then you have this wireless remote control where you can turn it on or turn it off. You can also adjust the brightness or you can make it warmer or cooler just from this little controller. And I love how easy it was to set up. And I love that I can just turn it on and turn it off right from my desk. I don't have to get up and having the actual controller come off the back of the light is so clutch because sometimes it's just hard to see and having it right in front of you on your desk. So you don't have to get up and move is really, really nice. Now on the light, I do have this diffuser and this wasn't actually made for this light, but it works perfectly. Basically, this is just turning this light into a big soft box so that the light is much softer and it just looks a lot better. Like I said, it wasn't meant for this kind of light. So I kind of had to get a little funky with how I attached the Velcro, but it works just fine. I've been using this for months. I love the look that I get from it. I love the soft lighting I get from it and it hasn't fallen off or anything like that. It is sturdy. It is good to go. Just looks a little funky from behind. Super dope setup. I'm excited for Nolan to actually create a new setup because he's actually moving from the time he shot that video, he's moving somewhere else and he's gonna create a new desk setup. So pumped to see that. But a couple questions that came from his setup. First, Mel asked, where did you find the brackets for the CalDigit? Now you can find these brackets on Amazon as well as Etsy and they're typically 3D printed, but a super dope way to hide them away. Kyle also got it as well. And the next question from Myco Geeky, he says, what backdrops and backdrop stands do you use? And the backdrop paper that Nolan uses is called Savage. Yes, I wish I called my company Savage, but Savage photo paper is what it is. And you could search, you know, various different links that you need on Amazon. And then as far as the stands go, we, he actually mounts it using a newer, you know, photo backdrop mount and it mounts to the wall or to the ceiling. But if you just needed a basic stand, newer makes those as well. But jumping into the next setup is actually my personal setup. Now, I'll definitely say this up front, but my setup probably isn't the most aesthetically pleasing setup, but it's definitely probably the most functional setup. And it's taken me years to dial this in. So I hope you enjoy all the hard work, blood, sweat, and tears I put into the setup. Let's jump into it. Let's start with the desk itself being a Husky desk. And although I would call this a desk, technically it is a workbench, but it is a super high quality, you know, butcher block top with a metal bottom. And I love that these actually come with wheels. It's super clutch because I 
to totally move this around and I'll show you a little bit, but it is also a sit stand desk. It's just not electric. You have to like crank that soldier boy right there. Um, and then you're able to change it. But this comes in many different colors. This is the 54 by 24 inches. So 54 inches wide, 24 inches deep. And this comes with a drawer and I love it. Oh, look at that. This is YouTube Secrets by Sean Cannell and Benzie Travis. If you are looking to level up your YouTube game this year, check out this book. I'll put a link to it down in the description below. But I'm a tech YouTuber, hence the messy desk. This is a $240 desk, absolutely love it. Love how uh, high quality it is and also the, the various different options that it also comes with. But let's talk about the brains of this whole operation. So I run everything off of this Mac mini with the M1 chip and let me tell you what, this thing is fast, it is quiet and I did, I did spec this out a little bit. I got the, you know, the one terabyte internal SSD and I think I umped the RAMs as well, but you can get this base for about $600, which is insane knowing how fast it is. I actually have it mounted to my monitor with the use of a clamp that I bought on Amazon. Again, links down to everything in the description below. And I just use command strips to mount it on the back of the computer. So it literally takes up no real estate and it just hangs out here. It's been hanging out here for a while, but that is what's running everything. From the Mac Mini, I have it hooked up to what is called the CalDigit TS3 uh, hub. And this is essentially a glorified dongle as the SD card reader, so it's easy to do that. It has a, a couple other ports at the front of it, which I love. But it also has great like Thunderbolt 3 ports and so many uh, other ports as the Mac Mini is kind of limited, as you can see with the amount of ports it has. So something like that pairs really well with the Mac Mini and it creates essentially my computer. Now, another extension of my actual Mac Mini and the CalDigit would be this. This see, these are called SSDs, solid state drives. And these are both like two terabyte drives. You can see how small they are and they're so fast and they're great for anything when it comes to creating content, editing videos, doing photography and things like that. But me plugging this into my CalDigit literally just expands additional storage. So uh, these are super clutch. Now when it comes to my keyboard and mouse, I love this thing. It is actually both Logitech products. So this is the MX series of Logitech things. So this one is their mechanical tactile keyboard. If you wanna listen, makes you feel super productive because of the sounds it makes. And then uh, the mouse that I use is the MX Master 3. This is cool because there's so many different things that they have this wheel on the side, the wheel on the top, other side buttons that you could program to do whatever you want it to do. And so love that stuff. And in continuation of control, I have what is called the Loop Deck Live. This device is essentially a stream deck on steroids because not only do you have the customizable buttons on the screen that you, you see, you can also customize these tactile buttons as well as these knobs. So, you know, if you're editing video or photo, you can adjust this stuff, you know, maybe, maybe it's volume, but these are like my quick actions because I visit these websites a ton. And so that's what makes up the brains and the computer of this actual setup. Let's break down the screens that I use and how I even mount this thing right over here. So the first monitor is my main monitor. This is the monitor that I put everything essentially on. It is a 32 inch 4K IPS monitor from ViewSonic. I've had this for quite some time, maybe close to three or four years. Uh, and it's not a cheap monitor. It is about $800, but I honestly don't know another monitor that is this incredible as far as color accuracy and just doesn't have any logos, is like super clean, uh, you know, close to the edge and things like that. And so uh, this 32 inch works fine for me. I think 27 would be good. It is not a cheap monitor, but I definitely think because I've been using it for four years, I'll like vouch for this all day. And I don't think it's anywhere near being outdated. Absolutely love this monitor. I have it mounted kind of like this and it's off to the side, which actually, because it's like low at eye level, it allows my camera to be at eye level as well. I'll get into that in just a moment. But my second monitor is a very cheap monitor. Now, I'm not too worried about this monitor being like super color accurate or anything like that. This is a 
1080 monitor that costs around 130 or 40 dollars. It's by G Tech, but here's why I love this monitor. It's solely powered on a Thunderbolt 3 cable. So this just plugs right into the Cal digit, and then I have a secondary monitor. I used to have this monitor like placed right over there, but when I was doing live streams, I found myself looking down when I should be looking up. So I've actually mounted this monitor with the use of a tablet mount. So this just clamps right onto the desk itself and then it's just holding the monitor and because it's so thin and lightweight and portable, it holds it like a champ. But these two monitors work wonders. And again, the real reason I have this mounted there is because I usually do live streams and I share a slide or a video or a screen. I just put whatever I want to share on this monitor and so that I know when I share it that everything that's seen on this monitor is what people are going to see. It kind of gives you some peace of mind when you're live streaming. But those are the monitors that I use for this setup. Super awesome. Again, links down to everything in the description below. But let's break down some of that AVL action that you've probably been wondering about. So the camera that I use for this setup is the Sony ZV-E10. I use this camera for a lot of my YouTube videos. I use it for the live streams. I use it for video conference calls. It honestly is one of the best cameras to use in this way as it does have a clean HDMI feed. So I plug in an HDMI cable into the back of the Mac mini, uh, which goes into a capture card first but I vouch for this camera all day. And the lens that I'm using is the Sigma 16 millimeter 1.4 lens. This lens gives you the blurriest of backgrounds. And when you pair it with the ZV-E10, you get an incredible image because the ZV-E10 has great autofocus. And so when you're at about arm's length distance, like I am when I live stream, I'm kind of like, this is my view. It gives you the perfect kind of medium wide shot with a blurry background. And so that is my main setup. If you could see, this is kind of a backup. I have a Logitech Brio, and I use this if, if I'm not really lighting myself, if maybe I'm doing a Zoom call and it really doesn't matter about the quality. And if this ever just goes out, I have a secondary option. So that's the Logitech Brio. That's just USB plugged into the CalDigit over there. Hey, CalDigit. And so that, that handles the video side of things. Now, when it comes to lighting, if I am doing a Zoom call, I'm probably just using the good old think neon sign as my light. But when it comes to the light I use when I like stream and, I, and when I wanna make sure I'm lit well, I use the Amaran 60D. This is a phenomenal cob light that produces a nice soft light on my face. And right now I'm running off batteries, uh, which will work in the meantime. But when I'm using it for live streaming, I got the power coming out of the back of my computer. And so, uh, a great light if you want a flattering, soft, large light on your face. I use this light for like 95% of my YouTube videos. And so that is the light. Let's talk about the mic since we talked about the light. I've gone through a ton of mics, but I have landed on booming my mic out of the shot when I'm doing streams and things like that. But I use the Rode Video Mic Go 2. This is about a $100 mic and I have it clamped onto this friction arm. But here's what's so cool about using HDMI to live stream is you can actually plug in your audio source directly into the camera. As you can see, that's what it is at the bottom. Uh, it's plugged in at the bottom of the HDMI. And then in my software or whatever I'm using to stream or do Zoom calls with or whatever, you just select the uh, cam link as your audio source. So I think this mic sounds amazing and you can also use this mic as a USB mic if you wanted to plug it in via USB. But let me just show you, I have the Rode mic on this friction arm and these friction arms not only hold up the microphone, uh, but it also holds up my camera. So I got two friction arms and let me just show you, I'm gonna show you this even though don't judge me. This is all the cables that I have. But if you come with me to the other side, Boy, you don't see no cables but one, boy. What you wanna do? So it's okay. It's okay that it's messy back there. But these friction arms are clamped onto my actual uh, monitor, uh, which is super cool. And it keeps everything secure. And if I raise up the monitor, the camera and the mic goes with it. Uh, obviously, if I crank the uh, desk itself, same thing. But that is super key when you're dialing this stuff in. And speaking of sound, I have these audio engine speakers with a aftermarket riser, kind of just put some rubber in between the desk and the speakers and angle them up. But these speakers are so good, they sound amazing. And if you're doing video editing work or whatever, podcast editing, you're gonna want some good speakers. Again, links down to everything in the description 
below. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, I have a hair light that's like suspended on the ceiling. It is a light that I have a remote controlled to and it's held up by this tension rod. I break this down in another video that I'll link at the end of this video, but this just gives me a nice separation from my background. Uh, I guess it's important to note the chair. I have this ergonomic chair. I think that's what the brand is, ergonomic. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, but real quick, uh, I just wanna tell you about cable management and how I keep this thing clean from the front. So you can actually buy these trays uh, on Amazon that actually hold you know, your power sources. It holds your cables, it holds so much. And so I do my best to kind of like keep the cables high and hidden so that when you are on the other side of my desk, you have almost the look of no cables. So that's my setup. I'd love to know out of the four setups, which one was your favorite? Let me know down in the comments below as I answer some of these questions. The first question that came in was from KD, I think Katie Jing. She asks, what's the black stick that mounts your hair light? Now that is called a very pole and it's simply a tension rod, kind of like what you would use for a shower curtain, but a lot more heavy duty. And it's a temporary solution to be able to mount things on your ceiling so you don't need to use light stands. So uh, I'll post links down into that in the description below. Uh, that is called a very pole. Next question from Damage Hitter. How can I connect my iPhone as a camera to my Mac mini like you do with your Sony or Canon cameras, please? So the way you would do this, I think the simplest way is to download this app called Epoch Cam, and I would encourage you to get the $8 version. This will allow you to hook up your iPhone to uh, your computer or laptop wirelessly or with a USB cable, but that is the setups. I hope you got value in this video. Check out another video where we break down our setups from last year, and I know you're gonna get a lot of great ideas by clicking or tapping the screen. Can't wait to see you in a future video. Peace.